stone now. He's a big lump and all. Do you know what? I hate X fighters coming back. That's a fucking great fight. Big step up, you saw how tricky Zabeda was, you see how heavy handed he was, and I thought it was a major statement. Bridges program to name mention there, mm -hmm. that possibly Max or that further down. Yeah, I love the fight. He texted uh, Kevin Rooney and said, I'll fancy Dorman Smith fight. Great. I mean, what a great name. I mean, you've got the Taylor Catchell, winner or loser. You've got uh, Liam Paro, you've got Shabriel Matisse, you've got Devin Haney, you've got Richardson Hitchens. So many fighters at 140, but the aim is definitely to position himself for a world title. If Adam Smith up. Adam Smith? No. He won't Adam make the EBU title, was there a chance that Donald Smith could, could fight for that? For me, no. Like, I think the only way we go back down to that level is to fight Adam Smith, because that is a big fight, and we want that fight, and we really fancy it, because we win comfortably. So, um, yeah, I think we'll just have to wait for them to vacate, and we'll see what fight can be made. I, I think to, to fight a... European guy that no one's ever heard of. After that, it's just a step back. So the only way we go back to that level, I think, is for Adam Azim. Just one away from the card. Alex Prasuk saying that he's not 100% sure that Fury will turn up for the fight against Alexander Russo. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he'll be there, for sure. Eddie, you announced that um, uh, Dalton's extended his deal with mm. Matra. I mean, with a performance like that, how big of a coup is that for Matra? Big coup, because you know, everyone always sniffs around fighters who are out of contract, and Dawn Smith's had a lot of offers. You know, there was a period where he extended his deal before, um, when Sky were chasing him really badly, you know, when he, we lost the purse bid. And he spoke to them, he stayed loyal to us, and this time around didn't speak to anybody, just extended his deal, and that means a lot, you know. And, you know, Grant's comments, but there's not a lot of loyalty in boxing, and it's a very cutthroat sport. It's a dangerous sport, and I think it is actually a sport where there should be less loyalty because, you know, you never know when your career is going to end. But when there is, like Dalton showed and Grant talks like that, it just makes me puff my chest and say, I'm going to take this kid to the world title. And I believe he's going to do it, I really do. And I feel tonight just felt a little bit different in the arena, just like, again, going back to the Kelbrook days where it just starts to get a little bit bigger, the atmosphere gets a little bit bigger. You know, you, w w I've seen lately that because the, the fights start so early, fan, fighters are selling 200, 300, 400 tickets. And if your fighter or your friend is on at five o'clock and you're, you live two hours away, are you gonna stay till half 10 to see the main event? And tonight, you know, we probably only had 100 or 200 who left out of, I don't know, four and a half, 5,000 because they wanted to watch the main event. And, and that, like, that's, that's a positive step. And it just feels like the Kell Brook days again, going back to, like, I don't know, Carson Jones and um, um, who was the guy, Ricky Hatton, for? Getting old. Costa Zoo? No, not him. Costa Zoo? No. The guy who he fought when he was getting a bit older. And then Kell boxed him, tall, upright. And love and love more and, uh, and No, I'm not love one do that, was no. at Hill's Religion Centre. Anyway, him. And um, yeah, it just, just starts, it starts feeling a bit better. Eddie, some good performances tonight from Sandy, from Dalton, and even local boy Flint. Which one stood out for you and why? Um, I like the fight between Campbell Hatton and Jimmy Joe Flint because it's exactly what we want to see. And I actually, when I went into Campbell Shane room after, he was in tears. And I, I was actually quite toy, really. I was like, mate, that was great. And he was like, I can't believe it. I lost it. I said, yeah, but you did everything you could, right? You couldn't have tried any harder and you lost. So when you go home, at least you can say I couldn't have done any more. And we all love fights like that. And he gets a lot of undue stick. He's a really nice kid. And I think all those people that have criticised him in the past can't help but go, fair play, mate. Like, you gave it everything tonight. And all we want to do is see great fights. And that was a great fight. So he's got to get better. But I'd like to make the rematch. And Flint, for me tonight, put in a performance that was more like English title level. 
rather than central area title level, but tough shit. He was the opponent and you lost, but I thought Campbell boxed well, actually. Sheffield got a new star now with Dalton? Yeah, I think so. You know, I think, you know, tonight again, you go four and a half, five. Next time you go six and a half, seven. And when we went to um, uh, Bramall Lane with Kel, like he had never done, you know, he'd done 8,000, but then we went up to 23 or 24,000 for the Errol Spence fight. So, you know, someone said about Dalton against Regis at Hillsborough. I think that probably fills this place up nicely. And then when he gets the world title shot, that's the kind of time you can go to Hillsborough. Eddie, Tony Bell, you said if the price was right, to be willing to box Carter Frotch. Now, I think you've said in the past that of like, any boxers you've worked with, if there's any two you could have back you in the streets, it would be those two. But who would win? Bloody hell, that's a war, that is. No, I don't in the ring. Weight, like, what weight would it be at? Because Tony's a big lad, although they look really well tonight. Could they, they, mind you, Carl's probably 14 stone now. He's a big lump and all. Do you know what? I hate ex-fighters coming back. That's a fucking great fight. It's a great fight. But let's not do it because I love them both. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Frank Warren reportedly unhappy that the Wilder Zion negotiations have been leaked. A lot of people speculate online it might have been you. Any truth to that? Oh, leaking it? Not leaking it. but no, the had... absolutely not. I've, I've, I've answered it and said no. You know, uh, Mike Coppinger actually messaged me about it. And I said no. And he still put the story out because his source was come from somewhere else. But absolutely not, no. I mean, I've got nothing, no reason to put that fight out there. And like I said earlier, like myself, George, Frank, His Excellency, we literally talk about 30 fights a week. And that fight, I'm sure, has been mentioned, as has Wilder Joshua, Caballel Dubois, Hergovic Dubois, Hergovic Joshua, uh, I don't know, Miller against Joe Joe, like literally dozens of fights. So that fight is definitely not made. And last one from me, uh, Jake Paul said the idea of him boxing Mike Dyson in headgear and bigger gloves is ridiculous and absurd. Just your reaction to that? Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's absurd anyway, but even more so. I mean, if you're going to do it, it's got to be a real fight. And... I just don't believe that someone who's 58 should be in the ring with someone who's 26, you know, and someone who's a, as a legend. You know that noise? That's, the, that's my worst noise in the world. Because that's, you know what that tells you? It's fucking time to get up. You know, I hate that a lot. Eddie, the uh, IBF have ordered uh, Beatrice Ferreira and Yanina Lascana yes. for the IBF lightweight title. Any, 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 any chance that will be moving forward quickly? That fight will happen before the end of April and we'll announce it next week. Perfect.